Hi, I'm Jack Polson, and uh, the purpose of this jolt is to demonstrate a way to install a pre-built virtual machine, which contains a complete development environment for this course. Um, so the first step is to go to the website for the class, which is located at www.stanford.edu slash tilde p-o-u-l-s-o-n slash c-m-e-194. Okay, so once you get to the website, uh, which you can see here, the first thing that you want to do is start downloading the hard drive for the virtual machine, which is located right here. So this is about 2.5 gigabytes, so it, it'll take a little while to download. So uh, we've already pre-downloaded it, and so the next thing you want to do is to go ahead and uh, download VirtualBox. So there's a link on the website. When you click it, it'll take you to the VirtualBox website. Um, so you can just go over to the download section and whichever operating system you're on, you can uh, click um, the appropriate uh, file to download. So we're on uh, Mac OS X at this point, so go ahead and click this download link. Um, so I guess this will take a little while to download. Um, once it's done, the installation is really straightforward. Um, so I'm going to go back to the website. Okay, so we, we just skipped through the installation process because it should be very straightforward and, and it's different on each machine. Uh, so once it's installed, um, now we just need to, to open up the uh, VirtualBox executable. Let's see, so on a Mac it should be in Applications. And where did that go? Here it is. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is essentially just tell VirtualBox that we're going to give it a Debian um, hard drive. So when we click New, um, we can give it any name we want. I don't know, maybe Debian ICME 194. Um, and actually it already picks up that it's a Linux Debian installation because of that name. Uh, so we click Next, or actually Continue, and Depending on how much uh, memory you have available on your machine, you uh, may want to give a different amount of RAM. So really, you could just go all the way up to basically where the green ends, if you like. Um, we'll be a little less aggressive than that so that the rest of your computer has a sufficient amount of RAM. Um, actually, four gigabytes should be more than plenty. Um, even two should be fine, for that matter. So um, since we already downloaded the hard drive, we're going to tell it to use an existing virtual hard drive. All you need to do is point to where it's located. So this should be in maybe your download folder. Um, so for us, it should be, oh, actually, so before you can um, point to it, you have to first unzip the, the hard drive file, um, which made it significantly smaller. So I'll go ahead and handle that. Um, so in the download folder, um, we want to look for, oh, it's up. Um, we want to look for the file Debian 6.06-CME194. Uh, um, so it has a .gz extension on it. That just means uh, gzip. Um, but on at least on Linux and a Mac, this should be automatic to unzip. And in Windows, actually, several utilities will, will handle um, unzipping this file. In particular, I believe WinZip handles this and most of the the popular unzipping utilities. So this will take just a moment. OK, great. So now the hard drive file has been expanded. So we can go back to VirtualBox and point to, to that hard drive file. So again, it's in the Downloads folder on a Mac. Um, so we just open that hard drive and then tell it to create the virtual machine around that hard drive. So now we're actually done. We just have to hit start. And we can ignore this message. It's just telling you that it's going to capture the keyboard. Uh, you can read it if you like. So once it boots up, we can just tell it to boot with the, the standard um, version of Debian. Actually, if you don't hit any button, it'll, it'll do that automatically for you. Again, there's another message. Um, that we can ignore. We'll hit OK. And so by default, there's a username uh, called Debian that's set up. 
So the password for the for this account is um, Stanford, where the S is capitalized, and then also in caps C M E one nine four, and then hit enter. So yet another uh, message we could ignore, and so now we're loaded into the um, into the user account that's been set up already. So um, what's nice about this virtual machine is that it already has everything that we'll need for the entire course uh, preloaded in terms of software. So you can open up a terminal through applications, accessories, and then terminal. And what's Im important to note is that we already have MPI compilers installed. So for instance, um, uh, MPI CC is the um, MPI C compiler. Then MPI CXX is the MPI Fortran compiler. So if you uh, change directories into the home directory, actually we were already there. Um, if we move into the uh, source directory, which I created for this class, you'll notice that there's an MPI-ICME-13 folder. So if we change into that, we'll see that there's an examples folder. If you move into that directory, then um, there's several both C and C++ examples that have been created. Um, these are all very, very trivial applications, but the point is that um, we can show you, for instance, what a hello world is and just make sure that that compiles. So if we looked at what hello.c contains, um, there's a short description. Basically, we just need to include standard io.h as well as mpi.h. And then uh, in a few lines, you can initialize mpi, figure out what your process ID is, which is often called a rank, um, how many processes there are, which is often called a communicator size, and then on each process we print hello world, and then print what our ID is, or our rank, and then out of how many processes. Um, and then after you're done with MPI, you, you finalize, and then in any C program you return zero if you've successfully completed. Okay, so let's just go ahead and compile this. Um, so MPI CC hello.c, and we'll output an executable named hello. Okay, so that's successfully compiled. If we wanted to run it with one process, you can just run it like a normal um, program. And you see that um, hello world was printed from the process with ID zero out of one process. Well, in, in C, you count up from zero, so this is what we expect. Well, if you want to launch this with, say, eight processes, and we might say MPI run dash the number of processes is equal to eight, and then we run the executable. Okay, so what we see is that um, eight different processes ran with process ranks ranging from zero to seven, and they each printed that there were a total of eight processes. Um, if you're more familiar with C++, there's also a folder with an equivalent file named hello.cpp. Um, so the file looks almost exactly the same. One of the main differences is that rather than including stdio.h, we include iostream. Um, and then instead of using printf, we use cout. Um, but the basic structure is the same. We initialize MPI. Um, you figure out what your rank is and how many processes there are, and then print hello world from each process and then finalize. Um, I don't really want to go over the, the full details of what uh, each of these commands are doing. We'll do that in a subsequent jolt. But um, what I want to show you is that we can now compile this um, program and run it. So rather than running MPI CC, if you want to use a C, uh, an MPI C++ compiler, you type MPI CXX, the name of the source file. You give it the output name, which we'll just say is hello. It successfully compiles. To run it on one process, you do what we did before. To run it with, say, six processes, you tell it you want number of processes equal to six, and then you run the program. OK, great. Um, so that will conclude this jolt. Um, there's another jolt that will show how you can compile MPI from scratch. So if you actually don't want to use a virtual machine, that's fairly straightforward. But you may only want to do this if you're uh, reasonably familiar with compiling software on your own.